Hi, my name is Angela Clark and I'm an educator for APQS and today we're going to be talk about how to load your long arm. We're going to start out by making sure that we have enough roll out on this. So if you've got a deluxe frame, you would want to step on your foot pedal to roll out to make sure you've got, you know, about two feet rolled off of your back roller. And on your front roller, you want to make sure that your brake is released so that your front roller will roll, so that both rollers roll. The trick behind doing this is you need to have your entire quilt surface underneath your quilt top bar and underneath your leveler bar. Um, your leveler bar is going to be the roller that doesn't have a leader on it. So there's no cloth on it, um, but you want to make sure that the actual quilt top sits underneath these two bars so that your surface is flat right on the frame. So we're going to start out by taking our backing roller and we're going to wrap our leader up around our quilt top roller. And that's going to make it so that we can't load this frame with the quilt on top of the quilt top roller. Once we have the backing roller leader up around our quilt top roller leader, we're going to walk around to the back of the frame and roll that leader up over the leveler bar. So we've already forwarded the quilt when we were on the front of the frame. So all we need to do is wrap this back, the pickup roller leader up around your leveler bar. So I'm going to wrap that completely around and make sure that I'm keeping my leaders really straight because you don't want your leaders to get all messed up and um, not flat. It's harder to load a quilt if your leaders have wrinkles. Now that we have our leaders up around our leveler bar, we're going to start um, loading the quilt. Before we can load the quilt, we have to make some decisions. Um, one of which is how we're going to load the quilt. Are we going to be using a full float or are we going to use, be using a partial float? And then we also need to know that the quilt is the right size, right? So that the backer is actually um, bigger than your quilt. You want it to be three inches bigger on all four sides of the quilt. Um, and you want to know that before you get it on the frame. You don't want to get to the bottom of your quilt and find out you don't have enough backing for your entire quilt. So that's where we're going to start is with our backing. The easiest way that I have found to do this is to fold my backing in quarters. So I'm going to take all four of my corners, put them together, so that I have my, my big backing um, folded in quarters. And a lot of times you're dealing with 120 inches of backing. So folding it in quarters means you're only doing 60 inches and not 120 inches, trying to make sure that something's big enough. Once I have this folded in quarters, I'm then gonna take my quilt top and do the same thing. I'm gonna fold it in quarters. Right. And then I match them together. When I match them together, I'm going to put the folds together and make sure that I have three inches sticking out on one side of the quilt. Because it's folded in quarters, I only need to have it on the side of the quilt and then on the top or the bottom. Now that we know it's wide enough, we can find the center of both the quilt top and the backer. So I, I folded it in half, so I know this is my center. I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to mark the center of this part of the quilt, the top of the quilt, and the bottom of the quilt. If your quilt is directional, you need to know which one's the top and the bottom so that you can make sure that it's loaded on correctly. And then we're going to get this out of the way because that's going to go on at the front of the long arm. This is my backer. I need to do the same thing. I'm going to mark that so that I can see it. And I'm also going to do the inside fold and mark that. Now that you have your centers pinned, we are going to take the bottom edge and kind of toss it over your long arm. So I'm going to open it up so I can get it across there because I need to get all the way up to the other end of my backer. And you have to make sure you get your backing on with the fabric facing the correct way. So you want the right side of your fabric facing down and the wrong side facing you. So and all I'm going to do is come up and match my center points, which is right here with my pin. And then I'm going to pin through the leader and the backing at the same time. 
And you want to take kind of big bites when you do it, like one inch bites, so that you, it's nice and smooth when you actually lay your batting down. But you can see that I'm just matching my two layers together and I'm going to pin so that the pins are pretty close to each other. And I'm going to go all the way down towards my left and then go all the way down towards my right. And we do that and pin out so that we can make sure that there's no pleats in the fabric as we're going. You'll see every once in a while I'll tug out towards my edge a little bit. This, for this is wide back, so I do have the salvage on here. If I was loading something that had piecing in the back, I would not tug it because the piecing would come undone as you were loading it if you did that. Now that I have, I'm done pinning it, I'm going to drop the backing into the center of the frame and walk around to the front. So now that we have it pinned onto the back, we're going to be working on the front. To make that easier, I actually put the entire backing up onto my back roller. So I am going to use my uh, motorized feed and roll it up onto the back roller. You just want to make sure it's going on flat. And you don't need to worry about ripples at this point because we're going to be rolling this entire quilt back up onto your quilt top roller before we actually start loading the quilt top onto the frame. So that's really all I need to do is get most of the weight off so that I'm not fighting it while I'm pinning on. But I'm going to find the center again and then start pinning on the front, doing the same thing, going all the way through the leader, matching up the edges, right? and pinning them together. So there are different ways that you can attach to your leaders. I'm using pins and just pinning them straight to the leaders right now. But you can actually have zippers that you sew onto your leaders and then you pin your backing onto two separating zippers and you can zip them right on so it loads really, really fast. You can also put on, there's Velcro loading systems and then there are loading systems that have dowel rods in them like um, edge leaders and red snappers um, and it lets you speed up how you're loading your quilts um, with edge leaders and red snappers you would just be snapping down so it's super quick to get it on the frame um, I actually use zippers most of the time because I can put my backing on the zippers while my computer's running and save time and I'm gonna go out from the center again you also may notice that I am um, when I start pinning out and I'm at my dominant hand, I'm right-handed, I will smooth everything out, go farther out on my pins and then pin back. Um, it's because for me, it is easier to pin going in that direction because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it might be easier to do that going the other direction so that you're not always trying to straighten the backing out as you're pinning. It'll speed up your pinning a little bit for you. Okay, so now that I have the entire thing pinned on, I'm going to drop this part into the center of the frame. I'm going to put my pins where I, they're not going to fall off my rollers. And I'm going to start rolling my backing up onto the quilt top roller, which is the very front roller on your system. And this is when you want to get it on really flat and tight. So I've got it flat. Now I'm going to step on my white button on my control and have this unroll my quilt and continue to load it onto the front roller. You wanna stop rolling this backwards when you're in the center of your quilt frame. Um, no matter how tall you are or how your, your frame is set in relationship to you, reaching all the way back to the leveler bar isn't comfortable. So keep your quilt top close to you when you're actually loading it um, and your back won't hurt as bad at the end of the day. Once you have it to this position, you do need to lock off your brake on the front of your frame. So now we're going to be pinning our top onto our quilt top roller. So I'm gonna take my quilt top and I'm gonna use my frame to help me again and we're just gonna kind of set it over that back roller. And I'm going to make sure that I have, I'm pinning to the center mark again and I'm just gonna pin it on. Now that my quilt top is loaded onto the frame, I'm going to make sure that it's flat over the back roller and I'm going to start rolling it up onto the quilt top roller. You will need to release your brake again before you can do that.
So I'm going to go ahead and clamp my brake again. And you want this to be about, you know, an inch to an inch and a half down from your leader. Um, and we're going to actually pull this up and over the front. Um, we're going to stick our batting in between the two pieces of material so that we can start loading the quilt the rest of the way. So we're going to take our batting. And it's not as important to find the center of your batting as it is the center of everything else. You just want your batting to cover the entire quilt top, right? So this one's a little bit long, wider than my backing, and that's fine. So I'm going to bring my batting up so that it's close to the edge. It's about two inches down from where I want it to be. Smooth it all out. And then I'm going to lean up against this front pole so it doesn't roll. And tuck the batting up underneath the quilt top roller. So I do want my batting to be slightly below where my pins are. I don't want to run over pins. I want to be able to see them. You want to get your batting on correctly as well. This batting is easy to tell if it's on correct because there's brown flakes all the way through it and the brown flakes need to be facing up. When you flip over to the back, the back is kind of scratchy. Um, the front is softer. So if you ever have something that's rougher or scratchier, it goes down. It's something called a scrim. It's a glue layer that's on the back of the batting and it needs to touch the backing. So you want anything that feels stiffer, scratchier, or um, uh, you know, just different to be down and the soft, fluffy part of your batting to be facing up. Once you have that on, we're gonna sew a straight line across this so that we can line our quilt top up. So I'm gonna use the channel lock on my APQS Millennium to uh, make sure that this is straight. So in this case, I'm gonna push the button on the front and you can hear the horizontal channel lock engage. Then I'm gonna do needle down, needle up, and bring my bobbin thread to the top. If you have a different long arm, um, most long arms do have horizontal channel locks. On the rest of the APQS line, they are on the back of the machine underneath the back right handle. So one, now that I have my thread up, I'm just gonna turn it on, do backwards, forwards, and stitch across my quilt. Tack, turn the machine off and then bring the needle up, pull it about six inches away, grab my top thread, which I just grabbed with my pinky, needle down, needle up, and move six inches away a second time. This second movement is really important because this is what's giving me my bobbin length um, for the next time I pull up my bobbin. And then remember to turn your channel lock off. Now, when I sew my top down, I tend to not use my channel lock because the edge of your quilt is gonna be uh, covered by your binding. And it's a really good chance to um, practice getting straight lines without a channel lock. If you're having a hard time seeing the white on white thread, you can turn your black light on, which you would do with the little switch that's in the back, back here. You can turn your light off, or you can turn it to black light, which can help you see white on white thread. And then we're going to bring the thread up again. So six to eight inches away, grab your top thread, needle down, needle up, and six to eight inches away a second time, and then cut at the surface of the quilt. The next thing we're gonna do is sew your sides down. And I do sew my sides down. So I am going to do needle down, needle up, really close to my leveler bar, grab my top thread and my bobbin thread, hold both of them, 
And I like to do this in needle down. I want my needle to be down at the end too. It's just how I feel comfortable. So I'm going to do needle down to start with so that the needle position will needle down when I stop as well. And I'm going to turn the long arm on and I'm going to back tack a little bit and then work backwards up my quilt. As I work backwards, you're going to see a little bit of extra fabric. It looks like the, the, it wasn't pieced correctly. It's actually fine. What happens when your long arm is moving is a little bubble of air will walk in front of the foot in the direction that you're going. So um, what I'm going to do is push down in front of the plate of my machine and flatten that air out. Get all the way to the back and then back tack again. Turn the machine off. Pull it away six to eight inches. Do needle down, needle up in the hole again, and then pull it away six to eight inches again and cut at the surface of the quilt. Now we just need to put the clamps on this side and we can move to the other end of the quilt. And you only want to clamp the backing. Now that the clamps are on, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. When you're putting your clamps on, you don't want them to be super tight. Um, all, the only thing that they're really here for is to keep the backing from being able to flip over underneath the bottom of your quilt and be sewn to the bottom of your quilt. So you do want a little bit of bounce on your quilt top. You don't want it super tight, but now we get to go to the fun part and we get to quilt.